Still in the attitude of worship before we go into the word. We're going to take some songs. I strongly believe that the Lord is here and his presence is here. I believe his glory is here. Only you.
Hallelujah. In just one minute, I want us to go before God and say, Father, I acknowledge that to your kingdom there will be no end. Even as I have come before your presence today, shine the light of your word from your kingdom into my life. Your word has says that the entrance of your word, it brings light. It brings understanding to the simple. Shine your light into my life. Shine your light into my situation. Cause every darkness in and around me to feel the glory of your presence. To depart at the arrival of the glory of your presence in my midst. Oh God, let your glory be made manifest. Let your presence be made manifest. In the name of Jesus, your word has said that the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of your glory as the waters cover the sea. Let your glory come down in the name of Jesus. Let your glory speak to us. Let your glory surround us. Let your glory go before us. Let your glory encapsulate us. Let your glory keep us. Let your glory lead us, O God. In the name of Jesus, shine the light of your word and your glory. In the name of Jesus. There is a word for someone here today. I'm just going to call on Daddy Okunla to give that word very quickly before we go into the message. Quickly, I believe the Lord is telling me that there's someone here. Everything that has been done looks strange to you, yet you're a child of God. And experiencing so many things, like if, just like Gideon says, if I, I were a man of valor, how come this? And the answer came to me, I believe the Spirit of said, you should, must not be silent. You must keep confessing the word of God. You have to speak a silent mouth is a sealed destiny. Peter said, 1 John 6, 63, and that is my final word that the Lord gave me to confirm. He said that, unto whom shall we go? You have the word of eternal life. The word of God is life. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. And if you in your mind will decide and determine that unto whom shall I go, Lord Jesus, only you, only you, I have only you, then you will look back and say, thank you, Lord, for you did not allow me to be drowned in this situation. You keep your focus on him because there is no other way but him, no other solution. Unto whom shall I go, Peter said, you have the words of eternal life. May that word be life unto you and whomsoever the Lord has spoken it. Amen. I bless God once again for the privilege accorded to me to bring his word to us this morning. I also am appreciative of the church leadership for this opportunity. We are in the month of the glory of his presence. And the topic for the message for today, and I pray that the Lord will give me speed, is abiding in the glory of his presence. The price I must pay. The price you must pay. The price we must pay. Abiding in the glory of his presence. The price we must pay. 
I want us to take uh, emphasis from the book of Psalm 15. Psalm 15. We're going to be reading that whole chapter. It says, Lord, who may abide in thy tabernacle, who shall dwell in thy holy hill? He that walketh uprightly and walketh righteousness and speaketh the truth in his heart. He that backbiteth not with his tongue, nor doeth evil to his neighbor, nor take up a reproach against his neighbor, in whose eyes a vile person is contempt, but he honoreth them that fear the Lord. He that sweareth to his own hurt and changeth not. He that putteth not out his money to usury, nor taketh reward against the innocent. He that doeth these things shall never be moved. Can I please have Psalm 24, verses 3? Psalm 24, verses 3 to 5. It says, Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord, or who shall stand in his holy place? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart, who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. He shall receive the blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. Abiding in the glory of his presence, the price we must pay. If I can please have verse 3 of Psalm 24, verse 3. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord or who shall stand in his holy place? We know that God is holy. He stands in his temple in heaven. He sits as God over all. He sits on his throne of judgment, righteousness, justice, holiness, and equity. Yet we are children of God. And the Bible makes us understand that as many as believe in him, he gave power to become the sons of God. Meaning by default, when we believe in the Lord Jesus, when we give our lives to him, we have been given the power to become the sons of God. And who are the sons of God? The sons of God are those who carry the presence of God. Abiding in his presence, the price we must pay. But there is a price to carry the presence of God. The Bible has said that we should present our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto him, for this is our acceptable worship. Meaning that it's not just anybody that can carry his presence. There are conditions to continue to carry the presence of God. There are conditions for the presence of God to flow out of us into the world around us. There is a song that says, Out of my belly shall flow rivers of living water. This is a promise for the children of God. And I ask this question, how many of us are rivers of living water flowing out of our bellies? Abiding in the glory of his presence. To abide in the glory of his presence, according to this verse, it says, who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Meaning, there is processes, there is steps that we must take. Meaning that the glory we had when we gave our life to Christ, we must have multiple forms of that glory as we grow in our faith. We cannot remain as babes. We must grow. We must as the Apostle Paul will put it, move from drinking milk to eating meat. Who 
who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord. Ascending is a difficult process. It warrants the ability or it warrants the need to exert power. You have to put in effort to ascend. We all know that climbing a staircase is more difficult than descending from the staircase. And God doesn't want us to remain at one level. He says we will go from glory to glory. Each one in Zion will go from glory to glory. Meaning the glory of his presence that we have today, the glory of his presence we carry tomorrow must be more. And growing and abiding in the presence of God, it's a demanding process. It's a tasking and challenging process. It is not pleasant. It is the climb up a mountain because you are ascending into the hill of God. The Bible makes me understand that God sits in the highest heavens. It is a sacrifice that we must pay. Psalm 50, verses 5 to 8. It says, Gather my saints together unto me, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. And the heavens shall declare his righteousness for God his judge himself. Seller. I'll stop there. Gather my saints together unto me, those who have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Meaning to keep carrying the glory of God, there are things we must do daily. There are activities we must keep doing to carry the presence and the glory of God. Jesus told his disciples, and by extension us, he says, when I go, I will send you the Holy Spirit, and greater works than these shall you do. And I ask myself, and I want us to ask ourselves, those greater works, how much are we doing? Ascending into the hill of the Lord, it is a battle, it is a warfare. Because the adversary, the devil, roams all around the earth seeking whom to devour. If I can have Jude 1 3, Jude 3, verse 3, please. It says, Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. There is a contention you have to contend with to carry the presence of God. To keep carrying the presence of God. You will contend with the world. You will contend with your flesh. You will contend with the devil. I can liken abiding and glory and, and increasing in the glory of his presence as a tree. Scientists will say that a tree is both gravitropic and phototropic, and I will explain. Gravitropic means that its roots will keep going down as much as possible towards gravity. And then its shoots will keep going high to the sun as much as possible. The Lord Jesus spoke to us. He says, abide in me and I in you. For without me, you can do nothing. For the roots to even begin to go deeper into the ground, 
Brethren, it will face problems. The ground is full of obstacles. The ground is full of stones. It's full of pebbles. The root must struggle. It must struggle to keep going down, to keep sourcing for nutrition. Because only then can it also grow upwards. A lot of people only see the upward shoots. They do not see the, the depth, the suffering that the roots goes through. Isaiah 37 verses 31. And the remnant that is escaped of the house of Judah shall again take root downward and bear fruit upward. To continue to abide in his presence, we must take root downward into Jesus. Because there are alternatives in this world, but we know that Jesus will always remain the same. Amen. What will it cost you? What is the sacrifice you must pay? Psalm, 2 Samuel 24, 24. And the king said unto Arauna, Nay, but I will surely buy it of thee at a price. Neither will I offer burnt offerings unto the Lord my God, of that which doth cost me nothing. So David bought the threshing floor and the oxen for 50 shekels of silver. There is a price you must pay to keep abiding in the presence of God. What is this price? Or what are the things we must do to keep abiding in the presence of God? We must die daily to ourselves. I was meditating and I came to realize the depth of the word sacrifice. A sacrifice has no choice. A sacrifice is already dead. When the Bible says that the Lord Jesus came as our sacrifice to redeem us to God, we could see his turmoil at the, at the garden of Gethsemane. He knew he was going to die. He said, if it be possible, let this cup pass over me. But not my will, but your will be done. To abide in the presence of God, to continue to abide in the glory of his presence, our watchword must be, not my will, but your will, Lord. We must die daily. The Lord Jesus was speaking a parable and he says, he, he said that except a corn of wheat falls to the ground and die, it abides by itself. We must die to our desires. We must die to our flesh. Because we do not have a choice. No, there's a, there are songs we sing. I am your sacrifice. I am your worship. Receive this living sacrifice. I am your worship. But are we really living sacrificially for God? Are we really living sacrificially for God? We have that parable in Matthew 13, 3 to 9, the parable of the seed that keeps falling. And I was meditating and I, I looked at it from a perspective that we are the seed. The soil is the presence of God walking in our lives. And the Bible says that there were some seeds that fell on rocks, some seed fell among stones, some fell among good, good, good seed, good ground, and they sprung up. The glory of God is always available for us, but to tap into new realms of his glory, we must die to ourselves. 
How do we grow and abide in his presence? We must be obedient. John 2, 5. John 2, 5. He says, His mother saith unto the servants, Whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. How many things has God told us that we've actually done? How many things have we tried to rationalize with our minds? It will not make sense. But God is our master. He's our king. He knows what's best for us. The Bible says that he knows the thoughts he has towards us, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give us a hope, a future, and an expected end. We must be obedient. Obedience is better than sacrifice. We must be steadfast in prayer. Luke 18, verses 1. And he said the parable unto these things, that men ought always to pray and not faint. How do we grow and abide? We must stick to the word of God. We must define ourselves by the word of God. We must let the word of God guide our intentions, our thoughts, our actions. Joshua 1 verses 8. He says that this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. What must we do to abide and grow in the glory of his presence? We must be led by his spirit. Romans 8.14 Romans 8.14 It says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Meaning, the level of your obedience to being led by God will determine the level of His glory you carry. If you only allow God, or if you only obey God 10% of the time, well, you only carry 10% glory. If you obey God, 60%, that is what you will have. For whatever a man sows, he reaps. That is what the Bible says. And the Bible has said that all of creation is eagerly awaiting the manifestation of the sons of God. And what is creation awaiting the manifestation of his glory and his power from us that proclaim the name of Jesus. The Bible says that this is the foundation that let those that call on the name of God depart from iniquity. Consecration. We must be consecrated to continue to abide and grow in his presence. 2 Corinthians 6, 17. 2 Corinthians 6, 17. And it says, Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. Brethren, for each and every one of us, there is an unclean thing. And that unclean thing is what God has probably told us to let go of. Maybe you are spending too much time on your phone, and God is telling you, he's nudging you, say, he's saying, give me 30 minutes. Give me one hour. Pray in tongue for 15 minutes. Pray for this person. The Bible says that to him that knoweth that, that he ought to do and doeth it not, to him it is sin. How do we grow and abide in the glory of his presence? We must be God conscious. We heard that last week. Genesis 39 verses 9. There's no, please, there's no point um, showing that for now. It's the story of jo uh, uh, Joseph when his master's wife wanted him to sleep with her. He says, how can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? He was God conscious. Be deliberate. 
Daniel 6 verses 10. Daniel 6 verses 10. Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house and his windows being opened in his chamber towards Jerusalem. He kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he did aforetime. He did not let circumstances, situations change his seeking after God. He sought the Lord with all his heart. He remained in alignment. That is one more thing we need to do to abide in the presence and glory of God. Isaiah 40, 13. Isaiah 40, 40, 13. 40, 13. Who had directed the Spirit of the Lord or being counselor had taught him. I don't believe this is what I'm looking for. The scripture I'm looking for is that, is that one that says that he that waits upon the Lord shall renew his strength. That's 40, 40 yes, thank you, 40, 31. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. How many of us, I'm sure a lot of us have gone to restaurants to, to eat or dine out or have some fun time with our family and our friends. What do those waiters do? They only seek and they seek after pleasing you. They'll come to meet you. Oh, is the food okay? How is the food? Are you enjoying it? Do you need more water? Do you need more this and this and this? And this is what this is saying here. They that wait upon the Lord, you forget your own needs. You go to God and you say, Father, how, what can I do? How can I, how can I help in the propagation of your kingdom? And there is a reward at the end. And lastly, how do we grow and abide in the glory of his presence? We resist the devil. James 4 verses 7. He says, submit yourself therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. And brethren, I'm here to tell you, when he's fleeing from you, he's only for a time. Because the Bible makes me understand that when Jesus was tempted, after he had overcome, the Bible records that the devil left him for a time. So we must be watchful. We must always be on our guard. Quick examples of people that paid the sacrifice required. The Lord Jesus, Abraham. The Lord asked something from Abraham, something he had been looking for all his life, his only son, the one whom the promise had been given to him for. He says, God woke him up and says, Abraham, this son that I have given to you, I want you to sacrifice him for me. God had made promises, but it wasn't until Abraham passed that test that God said, for a short year, I know that this man will do whatever I ask him. It was after that that the covenant was established. What are those things that God is telling us to leave? What is the price you must pay? Elisha paid the price of that anointing, to have that anointing from Elijah. He burns his oxen. By, 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 by commentary, those days, Elijah was not, Elisha was not a poor man. He did not come from a poor family, but he left everything. He let go and he let God. And we see how his life went. There are also examples of people that were not willing to pay the price. Samson was one of them. He could not control his mouth. Last week in, Bible, in, in Sunday school, we looked at silence can be golden, and his life was cut short prematurely. That will not be our portion in the name of Jesus. Another person that was not willing to pay the price was that rich young ruler. Mark 10, 17 to 22. Quickly, and I know my time is up. And when he was gone forth into the way, 
there came one running and kneeled to him and asked him, Good master, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? And Jesus said unto me, Why callest thou me good when there is none good but one, that is God? And verse 19, Thou knowest the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not kill. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Defraud. Honor thy father and thy mother. And he answered and said unto him, Master, all these have I observed from my youth. Then Jesus, beholding him, loved him and said unto him, One thing thou lackest, go thy way. Sell whatever thou hast and give to the poor. And thou shalt have treasure in heaven. And come, take up the cross and follow me. This man was obeying the normal commandments, the Ten Commandments that he had, but there was a specific commandment for him that he could not obey and he could not pay that price. What is your price? What is your price? What must we avoid quickly as I wrap up to keep growing and abiding? We should not grieve the Holy Spirit. And we can grieve the Holy Spirit by sin, disobedience. We know these things. When he gives us an instruction, we are to obey. And then we must be alert. Matthew 26, verses 41. Matthew 26, verses 41. 41, please. It says, Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Perhaps, when you initially gave your life to Christ, you were walking so much in His glory, but now you are questioning yourself. The Lord has encouragement for you. He says He's still here for you this morning. He's here for me this morning. An example of someone that strayed from God, and God in His mercy brought him back, is also Abraham. God had promised him Isaac, but he went and he had Ishmael. And then for 13 years, his life was devoid of the presence of God. He did not hear God, but God in his mercy came. And then Genesis 17 verses 1. The Lord had mercy and spoke to him and said, And when Abraham was 90, was 90 years old and nine, 99, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said unto him, I am the Lord God Almighty. Walk before me and be thou perfect. That is the commandment that God is having for myself, for someone, for yourself this morning. Shall we please rise even and take a quick word of prayer as we wrap up. I want us to go before God and pray and say, Father, forgive me. Have mercy for all the times I have grieved your spirit. All the times I have grieved your spirit and steps out of, your, out of the bounds of your presence. Outside of the presence of God is where we find trouble. The Bible says that when the edge is broken, the serpent will bite. Let's go before him and say, Father, have mercy for all the times I have grieved your spirit. All the times I have stepped out of your presence. Have mercy upon me, O God. And also pray and say, Father... Help me, give me the grace to pay the price that I need to pay to abide and keep growing in your presence. Whatever I need, it is I need to, 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 to do. Those little foxes I need to let go of. Help me pay the price, Father, that I may be and manifest in the fullness of all that you want me to manifest. And then lastly, I want us to pray and say, Holy Spirit, help me deal with anything in my life that will not make me abide and grow in your presence. For Samson, it was lost. For that rich young man, it was his riches. What is that thing that the Lord wants you to let go of so that you can abide in his presence? Pray and say, Father, help me deal with every little fox Everything in my life that will not make me abide and grow in your presence. In the name of Jesus. And so, Father, even as we have prayed, as we have asked, we ask, O oh God, that you answer us. We ask that you enable us and empower us to live a life that will always carry your presence and your power. 
that the whole world may see us and say that indeed we are your sons and daughters because we carry your presence in the name of Jesus. Even as we go in this week, let your presence go with us. Let our story not be that of Ikapod, that the glory has departed. But let your glory be our shield and our red guard in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for answering us. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen.